Storm clouds were brewing to the west, and I could feel the wind drawing them ever nearer to the construction site as I looked down over it. I was standing in the newly completed Traveler's Pinnacle. That was the best name I had come up with so far, though I had no doubt that James or one of his underlings would find a more suitable name for the tower soon enough. It stood close to 250 feet in height, with a broad base having its roots atop a massive stone fortress below. To achieve such lofty heights with a wood and stone structure, we'd had to build the bottom floor almost a hundred feet across and tapered it slowly from there as it rose in altitude. Even so, the highest floor was still nearly fifty feet across and boasted a magnificent view from its rooftop balcony. The land could be seen rolling away for miles in every direction. Albemarle was visible in the distance, and the main road went in that direction. Most notably, it was the only paved road that reached the massive construction project that I had named the World Road. A whisper of wind and damp air brought me back to my more immediate thoughts. Far below, the nearby quarry was in a delicate state. Work had begun that might lead to disaster if there was a heavy rain before it could be completed. Elaine, I said softly, to get my companion's attention. Yes, Your Excellency, she said promptly. I gave her a sour glance. She knew I preferred less formality, and I was not surprised when I saw the hint of a smirk in her expression. She was serving as my Mielte today my watcher or spirit guide might be better terms, the magical remnant of Moira Sentir, the last archmage, was no longer able to assist me. After the birth of her daughter, she had begun to fade, her purpose accomplished. In truth, I was not sure if she still existed at all. I hadn't seen her in years, and I left her to her rest, not wishing to disturb her. I need to talk to the wind for a bit. Remain watchful, I told Elaine, not bothering to reprimand her for using the formal address. It would only encourage her. I held out my hand, and she placed her own within it. As you wish, my lord, she replied, dipping her head respectfully. Her soft brown hair had golden highlights in the mid-afternoon sunlight, and the wind tossed loose strands of it across her delicate features. Though she didn't have Rose's high cheekbones or Penny's smooth complexion, she had grown to be quite a beauty in her own right, and her freckles had a certain charm. I put those thoughts aside and turned my attention to the sky above. The young woman was practically a niece to me, or at least I tried to think of her as one. 